Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Vim 1S from Cadas. This is an upgraded version of their entry-level Vim 1 single board computer, so let's go and take a closer look. Right. Here we have the Vim 1S sealed in its little white box. So let's uh, turn it over like that and bring in Stanley the knife and get inside. Let's just cut through the uh, cellophane stuff if we can. Hopefully that's started it off. Oh, I think it has. I can never get inside, but hopefully that'll get us in. And uh, yes, there we are. I can now open up a little box, which is always tricky. These are very difficult to open, these tiny boxes. That's my excuse anyway. Come on, let us inside. I can get in here. Any hour now, I'll have got inside the box. You'd think this would be simple, wouldn't you? But no, no, no. Oh, there we are, look. Yes, we have found a new single board computer. And there's also here an antenna for a wireless, of course. And this presumably is a little card telling us about the thing. And I think we missed somewhere in here. There's a little booklet. I can't get anything out today. There we are. A booklet about the board, and if we get the board out itself, which I know can be tricky, so we'll just do that. There we are, we have the Vim 1S. And over here, we've got a Vim 3, and if we put the Vim 1S down next to it, you can see they share a form factor, which means that the Vim 1S will fit in standard Vim cases. So, for example, we could fit it in the case like this, which currently contains a Vim 4. There are very nice cases available for the Vim range of single board computers. And indeed, I've got a spare one of these cases over here. just happened to have one of those lying around. So we'll put this board into this later in the video. Next, let's bring in a Raspberry Pi 4. There we are. You can see their relative sizes. Pretty similar size single board computers. The Vim 1S is slightly smaller, certainly thinner. And it's worth noting that the Vim 1S is very much a competitor to a Pi 4 with the price being $64.90 for the board, which has two gigabytes of RAM. Now, this is more than the current official price for a two gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, which is currently $45. However, the Vim 1S has got 16 gigabytes of onboard flash storage, so unlike with a Raspberry Pi, you don't have to add a microSD card. Now, at the heart of the Vim 1S, we find an Amlogic S905Y4 system on a chip with four ARM Cortex A35 CPU cores clocked at up to 2 GHz, as well as an ARM Mali G31 MP2 GPU clocked at up to 850 MHz. Unlike some other Vim models, the 1S is not supplied with a heatsink, as we can see, although as the SoC here is pretty energy efficient, this should not be a problem, and of course we could add a heatsink if we wish. As already noted, alongside the SoC, there's also 2GB of RAM, which is 1176MHz 32-bit low-power DDR4, as well as 16GB of eMMC 5.0 onboard flash storage. If we turn to the board's front edge, we find two Type-A USB 2 ports, along with a full-size HDMI 2.1 connector that supports up to 4K output at 60 frames a second. There's also an RJ45 socket, as we can see, and this provides a 100 megabit Ethernet connection. And note, I did say 100 megabit and not 1 gigabit, and I have carefully checked the specification. Finally, the last end user port, both on this edge and more generally on the board, is this USB-C connector for providing 5 volt power. This socket can also provide USB 2 OTG connectivity, but what all of this means is that on the Vim 1S we don't have any USB 3 connectivity and a wired network connection is limited to 100 megabits. And for a $65 SBC launched in 2022, I do find this rather strange. On the CADAS website, the use cases for the Vim 1S are listed as being a mini computer, nano server, computing cluster, and home theater PC, and most of these applications would benefit from the ability to add high-speed external storage as well as an Ethernet connection faster than 100 megabits. 
Moving to the board's first short edge, we find fan and real-time clock battery headers, along with power, function and reset switches that can be operated when the board is installed in a standard VIM case. Spinning 90, we next find a 40-pin GPIO connector that, interestingly, includes additional USB connectivity. And also on this edge, we've got a dual-channel IR receiver. Meanwhile, on the second short edge, we find a wireless module that provides 802.11 ABGN and AC Wi-Fi, as well as Bluetooth 5.0. And next to the module, we have a connector for a wireless antenna. Finally, if we turn the board over, I'm sure it won't mind just for a second. There we are. We find a micro SD card slot. This is XDXC. It's bootable and it's rated UHS-1. And next to it, we have this, which is an alternative 5 volt connector for powering the board. And also on the back of the board, although there's not a lot to see, when you first look at it, we have down here this 30-pin FPC connector that provides USB, I2C, UART, and GPIO connectivity. So there we are, the VIM-1 S. And I think it's now time to make the board happier by turning it the right way up, and even happier by fitting it in a case. Greetings! Here I am back again with everything connected up as you can see, although sadly I forgot to fit the antenna when I put the board in the case, but uh, never mind, I'll do that later. We've got an Ethernet lead connected here to set things up. And talking of setting things up, this board has got some very useful firmware on it called OOWOW or Infinite WOW, which allows you to download and install an operating system directly from the internet. So, Let's turn on the power. Here we go. And because this board hasn't got an operating system installed on it, it should go straight into the OOWOW software. Oh look, it looks like it's going to do just that. Infinity WOW is booting. Very exciting. And as you can see, we can continue. It's picked up our Ethernet connection, although we could set up Wi-Fi there if we needed to and it's taken us straight to the wizard to install an operating system, as you can see. But uh, I'll just show you there are lots of other options available. If we go back like that, you can see all sorts of things you can do in this firmware. Very useful stuff, but we'll go back to the, uh, the wizard like that. And we will, of course, now install an operating system. And I'm going to pick the most recent version of Android as our first test, so we'll select that there like that. And uh, obviously, download. And with the magic of filmmaking, the download's completed, and we will install. And there we are, it's completed. We've now got Android installed on the EMMC flash on the board, so let's now reboot. And apparently reboot again. And there we are, the end of oh wow, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we're coming up again, it's very exciting. And yes, this looks like we're going into Android, doesn't it? A rather familiar little Android animation. And here we are running Android on the Vim 1S. And as this is the first time I've seen this running, I'm going to check it out and I'll come back to you after this into title. So, here I am back again and things are going rather well. As you might have noticed, I've installed Google Docs and I've also installed YouTube. So let's uh, just show you how those work. We'll click here on, uh, first of all, Google Docs. We can see we can get to Docs, which we're writing on Google as part of a script for my recent uh, USB video and its video description and all, all that kind of stuff, which I all do in uh, Google Docs. Very important for me to have Google Docs available. And of course, YouTube, which I've got down here. Let's uh, run up YouTube and it'll be playing the last video I was testing, which is my standard test clip. There we are, just buffering it up. Come on, there it is, it's playing absolutely fine. If we just go down there, I can show you we're in 1080p. Stats for Nerds is obviously turned on. 
And uh, let's go back to the start again. And this is working very well. I'm very impressed with this. No drop frames, very good performance. I know I shouldn't be surprised, but good playback of streaming media content on an SBC. We don't always get it, do we? But to hear it's working very well indeed. Sadly, though, we do have this uh, bar at the top of the screen. The status bar doesn't disappear when we go full screen, but uh, I think I could just about live with that. This is certainly very acceptable YouTube playback. Now, having said that, I must point out I couldn't install YouTube via the Play Store. We do have the Play Store pre-installed, which is very useful, and I've been searching for YouTube, as you can see, and we find the Studio app, we find TikTok at the top of the list for some reason, but we don't find the standard YouTube app. So we've got a working Play Store. I use this to install Google Docs, no problems, but obviously not all apps are here. And if you're therefore wondering, how did I install YouTube? That's a good question. I did it by going to this application here, Aptodi TV, I think it's pronounced, I've no idea, but uh, I found YouTube available to install there. Where you can also install things like Netflix, it seems. This is obviously a very useful application for adding apps to uh, this particular Android install. So there we are. I think this is pretty impressive. This is a good Android install with good streaming media playback here on the Vim 1S. Guess what? Here I am back again, now running Ubuntu 2204, Jammy Jellyfish no less, and I've installed the Wi-Fi antenna, so we've now got a Wi-Fi network connection rather than an Ethernet network connection. And to install this operating system, I went back into UWOW by holding down the function key and pressing reset, and then selecting the operating system I wanted, downloading and installing just as previously. If I go down into all applications, let's just take a look around for fairly standard stuff here in Ubuntu 2204. Let's just run up, for example, HTOP, which takes a little second. This system is slightly sluggish. And I'm not surprised about that because Ubuntu 2204 should normally be installed on a system with at least four gigabytes of memory. We've got two gigabytes here, about half used by the system when it's basically doing very little other than running HTOP. So it's not surprising things are a bit sluggish. But it does work. We go, for example, to uh, LibreOffice Writer. That comes up relatively quickly. There we are. We can type hello and make it very large as we always do in these videos, because that is the law. That clearly works. We could use this system as a nice small word processor. No problems at all. We can now close down though. Go away, we don't need to keep that. And I have installed a browser, the Chromium browser over here. No browser was apparently pre-installed, although it thought Firefox would install when I tried to install it. Don't know quite what's going on there. Anyway, I've got Chromium installed here, as you can see, and I will do a YouTube playback test I'll warn you in advance, it isn't going to work very well, but we will try it. And in fact, I'll speed forward to get to the point where the video is playing, because it'll take a little bit of time. And here we are now playing back 1080p with lots and lots of drop frames, as you can see. If you want a good example of the fact that the reason that an ARM-based SBC struggles to play back video in the browser so often is to do with software, not hardware, then we've got that example here. We know that the Vim 1S can play 1080p perfectly well. We've just seen it in Android where it had a good driver. It doesn't have the same driver support like so many SBCs in the desktop operating system and therefore performance isn't very impressive. So uh, there we are. Let's uh, leave that for that, come out of that and uh, say goodbye. Go away, please. There we are, it's done it. And the final thing I want to do here is to take us back into a terminal where we were with an HTOP a second ago. Come on, terminal, there we are. And let's just do an LSBLK, list block devices, on the system, where we can see that we have the onboard EMMC flash storage. That's a 16 gig storage, MMC BLK0. And I've also got plugged in here a SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card, a 32 gigabyte card, MMC BLK1. So what I want to do is to test the speed of those devices, just to see how it's working on this system. This will test the speed, the read speed of the onboard EMMC. I have to put in the uh, password, hopefully that's correct. I think it is, 
and we'll get a speed in a second. What's it gonna be? Very exciting. There we are, 150 megabytes a second. Not too bad for MMC flash storage, although we've seen faster recently on some other boards, but that's, that's not too bad. But I'm also interested, particularly on this board, of the speed of the micro SD card reader, this UHS-1 card reader. So let's do a test now of uh, that device there. Remember, a SanDisk Extreme Pro card, a very fast card. So this really will be giving us a speed of the interface rather than the card. And we have a result of 57.37 megabytes a second. Let's just repeat that to really give it a few tests to be absolutely fair because that's not a fantastically fast speed for a SanDisk Extreme Pro. That has to be showing it's consistent, isn't it? The speed of the interface. So there we are. We've had a little look at running Ubuntu 2204 here on the Vim 1S. It doesn't run as well as it runs, for example, on a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, which sells for about the same price, but there's no doubt it works and it gives us another choice of operating system alongside Android. The Vim 1S has got fantastic firmware for installing an operating system, as well as a good Android image available and good Android performance. This said, the currently available desktop operating system, Ubuntu 2204, is a little heavy for a board with two gigabytes of memory. And I do remain surprised at the launch of a new single board computer for $65 in 2022 that doesn't have USB 3.0 connectivity. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please pass that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.